Welcome back my book loving friends. I'm Reagan and this is my channel Pages Rediscovered and we're just going to jump right in to my previous book haul. Um, some of the books that I picked up from my thrift with me video which I will link down below in the description box. So I'm going to go ahead and get started right away. Uh, the first book that I want to talk about is this book. It is called Juba This and Juba That. When I picked it up I had never seen it before. I'm not familiar with the author, know nothing about it. It just had the look. Um, it looks kind of vintage, old. It, um, I don't know, it just, it just grabbed my attention. So it's actually really interesting. And of course, the first thing that I thought of, what on earth is Juba? So I did look that up for you, and it's kind of interesting. According to um, CollinsDictionary.com, Juba is defined as a dance originating among plantation slaves in the southern United States, featuring rhythmic hand clapping and stepping. Um, so it is also the capital of South Sudan, and it's also a river in northeast Africa. So that's the definition of Juba. Um, from what I understood, it actually originates in Zulu and it means to kick about. So, which is kind of appropriate because this is a book um, about, it's a book of rhymes and songs to sing and play, stories to tell and riddles to guess. So it's actually really a neat book. It's fun. It has a lot of the things that we might be familiar with, like um, poor old lady swallowed a fly, um, I'm a little teapot, if you're happy and you know it, um, some of those familiar uh, finger plays, the incy weensy spider. But I wanted to show one in particular, this game, I went to the library, which pretty actually pretty simple and easy and it, we might play variations of this game with other subjects rather than books but um, the thing that she suggests that you do is each player has his chance to name a book title but he must repeat all the previously named titles to stay in the game those who cannot remember all previous titles are out the last player wins the game so it gives also an example. So the leader might say, I went to the library and I read Tom Sawyer. Then the first player would say, I went to the library and I read Tom Sawyer and Curious George and so on and so forth. And each player has to remember the previous titles or they're out. So that was kind of a fun game, especially for those of us who love books. There are also some kind of fun riddles in here. I love really corny riddles. I love puns. So it was appealing to me. Let me see what I can find here. Um, what can you see down in the lake that's always free but that no one can take? What do you think that is? The answer is the moon. So those are just some examples of the fun things that you can find in this book. I will probably be keeping it for now. It seems worthy. Uh, my next book is just a board book, but it is a fabulous book, The Tale of Three Trees. I had this in paperback, and then um, a friend of mine who her family went, uh, they actually are living in Canada with um, doing some missionary work up there, and I gave her my paperback copy, so I've been looking for this, and I'm glad to find it in a board book because I do have a toddler, so... It is a wonderful story. Great to read around Christmas time. Great to read around Easter. Um, if you're not familiar with it, definitely grab it. Um, the premise is that there are these three trees and they each wish for something different, to become something different. And those things kind of materialize uh, within the story of Jesus. So it's very moving, it's beautiful, I love it. Go get it if you don't already have it in your library, or at least go check it out from your local library. So the next book that I, I did pick up was Siamese Summer. I'm not familiar with this author, never seen this book, but the illustrations are, I mean, they're just, um, 
little sketch drawings, as you can see. And I just love them. Anything that has sort of nature, um, especially nature illustrations, I tend to gravitate towards those books. And this one uh, is about these two Siamese cats and they are city cats and they want to go to the country for the summer. So as you can imagine, they run into all different kinds of critters that they're not used to seeing in the city. Uh, so it's about their adventures. With that, they run into snakes, they run into raccoons, they run into a flying squirrel. So it's just a, a sweet little story about these two Siamese cats going to the country for the summer. So my next book is this one by Jane Ray. Um, I did pick this up, just I honed in on her name because it was familiar and then the illustrations and it started to click that I did own her book and I actually really, really love uh, her book. I believe it's just The Creation Story. And her illustrations in that book are gorgeous. She always has these sort of gold embellishments, but they're not overly done to where it looks cheap and gaudy. It's just, it just adds this extra touch of elegance and beauty to her illustrations, in my opinion. So I was really happy to see this one. And of course, when you watch the video, you'll realize that it took me a second to recognize that everything was in Spanish. Um, so, but I still grabbed it. I do grab books in different languages sometimes because I would like for us to um, do some foreign language studies. I don't know if Spanish will be one that we end up doing. I was thinking about French too with my younger daughter, but um, the title of this book is actually in English. I will translate it because I'm not going to try to pronounce anything in Spanish. Um, it's actually The Happy Prince. And here you can maybe see it is based on an Oscar Wilde story. So she, uh, Jane Ray, she just has lovely illustrations. In my opinion, I love how she uses sort of the borders along her pages. She does that in the creation storybook as well. She also, she has several books but there's the story of creation, the story of Christmas, she does Noah's Ark, but there's many, many more that she um, writes and illustrates. So I highly recommend them. Oh, by the way, the story of creation, the text is from the King James uh, version of the Bible. So that is what accompanies her lovely illustrations for that book. And I've read it with my daughter several times and I really enjoy that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about Jane Ray is that she actually started out doing stationery. She collaborated with uh, another person to create cards, I think wrapping paper. And if you go to her website, you will see that there's still a tab for stationery and it will take you to look at some of her beautiful things. So if you're interested in that at all, I might encourage you to go check that out. So this book is the one that I was excited to find. And it's because it is by Millicent Selsum and I just I love her as an author um, her books are always lovely her illustrations are always lovely but this one of course is illustrated by Ezra Jack Keats um, so I was telling you guys about Millicent Selsum she authored let's get turtles she authored um, I think it's called Benny's Animals. She has a lot of um, science-based books, especially nature-related books. And if you want to know more about her and maybe see a few more of her books, I would recommend going to the website reshelvingalexandria.com and I will also put a link to that in the description box below. But that website is just a wealth of information for different authors and they're adding new stuff all the time it's if you, especially if you love children's books in fact that's what they mainly cater to children's books young adult books not young adult books in the sense um, as we know them but um, primarily for homeschoolers it's just a fabulous fabulous website I cannot recommend it enough um, the ladies who operate it Sarah and Tanya and Amber are absolutely fabulous and wonderful. They do their research. The way that they have formatted the website is amazing and so user-friendly. 
and it just provides you with so much information. It will tell you a little bit about the author. It'll give a list of their series. It will tell you age ranges for each book. So please go to that website. It is phenomenal. And we also have a fabulous group online on Facebook. Uh, and well, we don't, I'm, I don't monitor or admin the group at all, but I've been part of it for so long. So I'm just going to say we, um, but it's not my group. I'm just a member there. And it is also reshelving Alexandria. So go look it up and become a member. And the ladies and gentlemen that are part of that community are just, they are so amazing. They have so much knowledge. A lot of them have been doing this for a long, long time. Some people have their own lending libraries that they operate. Um, in their own communities that are and these libraries are filled with fabulous living beautiful books and they are just a treasure trove of knowledge and information so please um, join the group or go check out the website actually do both learn more about Millicent Selsum um, and of course this book is pretty much what it um, claims to be how to be a nature detective by observing things that you see in nature, tracks, um, little leftovers of meals, um, things like that. So yeah, it's, it's a really great book. She's a great author. Oh, one more thing, sorry, that I wanted to mention about these books because I showed you one, and this happens to be one too. I showed you one in the thrifting, thrift with me video where I said, oh, if it has, I think I said it was a TX and then a number, um, and it has this kind of look to it. I always grab them because usually they're really good books and they're, they're actually vintage school elastic books. They're typically very inexpensive. I mean, you know, they're old paperbacks, so I don't know. They seem to hold up okay as far as the ones that I have found, but I was so curious because I am not sure. <laughs> I've always seen there's, this one has TJ and the one I showed you has a TX. Um, they also have TW, TK, and T, and then followed by a number. And I was curious what that meant. So I looked it up and there is a cool website called vintageschoolelastics.wordpress.com. And it has information about these vintage school elastic books. It has lists and it talks a little bit about those letters and numbers. So the letters were series identifiers. That's pretty much all I got out of my research. I don't know how how it distinguishes between the series, but they are series identifiers. And then um, all of these books that were published from the 50s to the 70s are numbered consecutive, consecutively. So that's kind of a little bit of a background as to why these things are located on the spine and <coughs> excuse me I wanted to show you I just grabbed a couple I actually have several of these kinds of books but here's a couple more just to show you kind of the variation so there's a TX and then a number 159 I think um, TW and this is a copy of Blue Willow by Doris Gates another great book and great author and this one is Rocks All Around Us by Terry White, Terry Ann White. She also authored um, the archeology span book, the All About Archeology span book from that series, if you're familiar with the All About series. And if you're not, um, again, go check out Reshelving Alexandria. I don't know if they have that series up yet. They are still relatively new, so they have a lot to add. They're working really hard to get a lot of stuff up there, and I know they have great, great aspirations. So if they don't have it up there yet, be patient, they will have that shortly, I'm sure. So one more thing, did I make a mistake by not getting all of this child craft annuals? I don't know. I'm kind of regretting it, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know if I will use them. We have about four or five of them and I grabbed a couple of them that are from our library. <clears throat> And these are the two that my daughter and I have actually utilized the most, Math Magic and the Puzzle Book. These are both child craft annuals. Puzzle Book is just, it's just fun. Puzzles, rhymes. This one is 19, the 1982 annual. And then Math Magic 
is the 1978 annual. This one is a lot of fun. Like, I know it has math in the title, but don't let that discourage you from getting it or from using it with your child. Your child will actually really, really love it. My daughter, surprisingly, really enjoys both of these books a lot. Um, so I don't know. Again, you know, I was kind of turned off by some of the illustrations. I just flipped through and I wasn't really sure if it was something that I wanted to um, kind of make room for in our library. So you have to tell me if you think I should have got them or if you have them in your library and you think they're amazing, let me know. So I have a couple of bonus books because I did go thrifting again. I told you I have a problem. Um, but And I tried to film it, but there's just nothing. I am coming up empty-handed so many times. So I only grabbed a couple of books and I'm just going to throw these in here um, really quickly. I found this Alice in Wonderland companion library book. It also has and through the looking grass, Gla glass, not grass. Um, so these companion library books are, I think they're pretty good. What I can tell, this has the original illustrations. It's in good shape. Um, so if I, if I come across these and they're inexpensive enough, I'll grab them. I'm not really sure why I grabbed this because I think I have two copies and other series of the Ventures of Alice in Wonderland. But now I have another one, why not? Um, so there are a lot of classics in this series. Um, just to name a few, there is a list on the back. Um, <clears throat> Pinocchio, Hans Brinker, Little Men, Little Women, The Prince and the Pauper. Um, I am not certain about abridgments or adaptations. This one does not appear to be abridged at all, but I, couldn't, I can't say that for all of them. Some series might have a couple of um, books that are adapted and a couple of them that are not. So you just have to kind of do your own research and figure out which ones are adapted and which ones are not. And then finally, I have a paperback, Happy Birthday, and this is by Carolyn Haywood. And she is another author that you can find on Reshelving Alexandria. Um, she is well known for her um, B is for Betsy series. She also has, um, she writes about Eddie and uh, Eddie like the dog holder or something. I don't know. I have a few of her books, but B is for Betsy series, probably um, what she's most well known for. And this on the back says, for anyone who loves birthdays, here's a book full of birthday fun. Jonathan thinks his birthday is ruined when he absentmindedly leaves his cake on the mailbox at home. Betsy's class is all set for their party for Mr. Kilpatrick. That is until Billy sits on the cake. Is the party ruined? Um, so it's nine short stories around birthdays. So I grabbed that. I thought that would be kind of something fun. So that is it for my haul this time. And I am sorry, I don't have a lot <laughs> and I haven't found anything fabulous for you yet, but I do have some things planned and I hope that they'll be exciting and um, interesting for you to watch. So I hope that you will come back, keep coming back and like, and subscribe. If you hit the bell below then um, that will notify you whenever I come up with a new video and uh, yeah so thank you again for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Bye!